Thank you for having me tonight. So, two Snelling plays located right off of uh, Hull Street. Uh, go through the proposal. Uh, we have uh, right now currently it's a three family residential building. Our proposal is to keep it a three family residential building. We want to extend the living space of the first floor unit into the basement. We want to extend the uh, top unit, unit number three, at a one story addition and make that a duplex apartment with an exclusive uh, private use. Uh, Roof, top, uh, roof deck and not changing the occupancy is going to remain as a, a three family. We have some violations that by uh, filing the application can cop to some violations. The FAI, you can probably assume the traditional violations that we see. The FAI, which is we were a little bit below the 3.0, which is in the multi family residential sub district, going to a 4.3 by adding the basement uh, square footage and the, the roof deck. Also, we have uh, another violation of the radio setback in the multifamily residential sub-district. It's 12 by adding the one. It's, it's a pre-existing uh, violation because we're already to our property line, as you'll see, and I'll go through it by adding the one-story addition, and we're not setting it back for 12 feet from the back. It would trigger that violation. We are setting it back six feet as I'll go through it. And the third violation is a roof structure violation because we are adding the one-story addition, which is we're altering the current roof. So let me go through this. So, two snelling place. So, um, so here's the Omar Church, there's Salem Street. These buildings right here are Salem Street. So, that is, this is seven Hull Street. That is one snelling, two snelling, three snelling proposal that I think this council heard within the last year, and then four snelling. Right here is the Michelangelo, and the entrance is here right off of um, Hull Street. Through the, through the proposal, so you can construct a one-story addition, extend the living space of unit one into the basement. Um, it's a multi-family residential sub-district. The lot size, as you'll see, is uh, 618 square feet, so a very small lot. So you can see our, our unit size, our current unit size is uh, three one-bedrooms at approximately 460 60 square feet. Unit one is a little bit smaller because that's the main stairwell. So, but it's 460 square, square feet for one bedroom, one bath. Uh, just a BPDA map right there. That's house seven house street one two three and that's four right there. Another site existing site plan as you can see. Uh, how we gain entrance into Snelling Place. This is the back of the Michelangelo, I believe. So, and if you go back here, Michelangelo will be on the left. Um, so this is our zoning chart, our dimensional regulations, as you can see, in terms of the violations that we need relief from from the zoning board of FAR. So, like I said, we're going to 4.3 by adding the existing living space. Um, everything else, we're in compliance, so it's a pre-existing violation. The minimum, the radiot is 12, as you can see, pre-existing is zero, so we're already in violation, and we're going to set it back six feet, so um, we'll be in violation. The other one is the roof structure. We don't need any parking, open space we need. So those are the usual violations that you see, but we need the open space because we have plenty of open space in the parking since we're not changing the, uh, the occupancy. This is a plot plan uh, done by Boston Survey, George Collins. Um, you can see the, the lot comes, comes out, jags in, and then it goes out. So the one story addition will kind of go right to that line there. It's not gonna go all the way back. So from here to here, it's about six feet. This is uh, the lower level where we, uh, proposed so we set this back here about nine feet and the reason why we set it back here is mechanicals i want to keep mechanicals in here and we want the room for some storage in case we have some bicycles and whether it's maybe some women with, with some children uh baby carriages or some storage for for the building that you can enter you know you can enter either through the main building or there'll be a doorway here you can get in so we wanted to keep this um, some free space some um, open space for for the building, a one bedroom down here and one bath, that's the lower level. And it has an interior stairwell, as you can see, and this is the uh, one bath. Uh, another bedroom and a bath. So unit one is a two bedroom, two bath, approximately 800, 800 square feet, 840 square feet of living space. Unit two is gonna remain the same, just gonna be remodeled. It's a one bedroom, one bath, uh, 460 square feet. And unit three, on the existing unit is a one bedroom, one bath, so the lower level is going to have one bedroom, one, 
one bath with the kitchen, uh, laundry room, stairway going up. And this is the one story addition. As you can see, we have two bedrooms and a bath. So unit three is gonna be a three bedroom, two bath. So the bedroom count, I know this is important to folks. So the bedroom count is going from currently three to, to six. So we're adding uh, three bedrooms to the existing uh, place. So when we add it, we're gonna be setting it back about six feet. As, I, as you looked on the site plan, as it jogged out, this is gonna be just an outdoor patio space for unit number three. Uh, so we didn't we didn't build all the way to our property line. So our property line goes to about here, okay? And then you'll see one snelling and then three snelling is here. The roof deck, this is the roof. We set the deck, here's our existing head house, oh, I'm sorry. Head house, will, the new head house will be here. And stairway, interior stairway to the new roof deck, approximately 160 square feet. Um, it is going to be set back from the front of the building, approximately nine feet, and it's going to go to our back, not all the way to the property line because we have that open space roof looking down. And the reason why we, in this unit, it's actually about 900 uh, square feet up and down, three bedrooms. Um, and the reason why we set this back uh, nine feet is to, because what we did is an identical, we didn't do it, but try to put together an identical addition from what of three selling places. I'll go over and I'll get to it at some point. But so here's the front elevations at Snelling Place. The current building is about 33 to 35 uh, feet high, adding 10 foot addition, we're going to about 43, 45 uh, in height. So with, within the height, um, of 55 feet, which is in the north end, even with the head house, which you don't add, but we're not even at the 55 feet. So uh, we're below the height requirement. We don't have a violation of any height. The, the roof deck will be set back from this front lot line, nine feet. And this is a back elevation. So these here are existing fire escapes, um, and they're gonna remain. You can't remove them because this is the second means of egress for not only two snowing place, but for one snowing place. And everybody knows in the neighborhood, who lives in the neighborhood, a lot of your fire escapes are attached to the other building and that's your, your way out. So if something happens, you go to the, the next door unit. Um, this is the fourth floor outdoor patio, uh, which is set back about six feet. This here, it, it was originally on the plan as a fire escape, but according to the building code, I don't believe we're going to be able to do it. So that's going to, that will be removed. So um, can't do it. I don't think we can. I don't know the architect put it in the plans, but that, that's going to be removed because you can't put it in the fire escape. All right? And plus we don't need it because we have two means of egress for each unit. This is, and I just said, I think it's relevant, but you, you you put as much weight as, it, as you want uh, this board, but I think this is relevant. This is three snelling place. Three snelling place, as you saw on the site plan and um, the overhead plan, it's right next to, to us. So it goes one, two, and three snelling place. This is a plan that was approved um, by the Zoning Board of Appeals. No work permits have been pulled as of yet. My understanding that work permits will be pulled soon after speaking with the attorney on record on this particular project. Uh, this was before the council uh, about a year ago, uh, got unanimous approval. It was before NURA back, I believe, in, in January. Also got, uh, uh, I think the vote was like 18 to 6, not to oppose. Uh, it went before the ZBA, it was supported by our district councilor, our mayor's office, and there's no opposition to this particular proposal. And what we did, and why I'm showing you this, because at one point we're working with three snelling place to build identical additions. The floor plans are a little bit different. In three snelling place, you'll have to go over it would have eight bedrooms and, and different bathrooms, different floor plans, but the, the addition is identical to two snelling place. Um, and this is the roof deck, same thing, it's set back, set back in the front, set back in the back, this is two. Oh, actually, that's 190 Salem Street, so here's two, here's us, and then one would be here. So the roof decks would be in alignment with each other. Um, this is the rear elevation of three snelling place, as you can see, it's, we wanted to make it I identical to the two snelling places. This is why we propose it as a fourth floor outdoor patio and then the roof deck. Um, 
kind of just a rendering that architect put together. And so this would be seven hull, one snelling, two snelling, three snelling, and four snelling. However, just I want you to just keep in mind, three snelling is not built yet. So this is just something our architect put together so people can get a visual of, of what we try to do so we can make it identical to, to, to three. Um, that's just a, just a different view. And that is it for the presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Currently, they're all the same elevation, right? I'm, uh, they all, they're all the same on two and two. Currently, they're all the same. Yeah. Right, probably all at 33 feet in height, identical. Okay. And what I'll do is just ask the uh, council if they have any questions, and we can open up the, the butters and onions. So, questions? Uh, yes, on the top floor, how many bedrooms and bathrooms would you say? Unit number three will be a three bedroom, two bath unit. About 900 square feet. Is it uh, apartments or condos right now? They're apartments. We have the least out. We have uh, least tenants. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's the term of the leases? The, the, the building was originally purchased about four, uh, just over four years ago. At that point, it was at that point uh, the electrical and everything was a fire hazard. At that point, so when Barat purchased the building, immediately uh, he decided to upgrade the everything to bring it to current codes. Um, he. His plan was to ultimately kind of it off, keep the top unit for himself, and sell the remaining units off as condos. He, he went to MIT, he's an engineer, he uh, is working in Singapore and is planning on uh, coming back to Boston in about two to three years and is planning on using the top unit for him, his wife, and their two kids. So we've got the leasing. But, 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 but right it's now, been leased because we've been waiting to get this approved. We went, we started to go through the process two years ago, and and the whole process got very much delayed. Do, do you know if it's a one, one year lease? Six, oh, it, they're all expiring in they're all expiring this summer, and we're hoping to go ahead and just build it and condo and sell off all but the top level afterwards. Have there been any short-term rentals in the time that he's owned them? The, uh, he rented it out to, he had leases that he rented it out. One of the people that he rented it out to started to rent it out short-term. He found out, immediately evicted them, and terminated the lease, and then we rented it. So there was no intention to have short term, but one of the people, one of the people, did do it for about six weeks until the point that he met. Yes, I mean that's obviously the big issue here um, in terms of Airbnb and other short term, as well as just landlords that aren't maybe present in the neighborhood and having their tenants um, abide by you know trash things like that. Uh, it's, so. it's also managed by by Vera from Hogan Property right here on North Washington, and yeah, when she she found out that there was long term and yeah. that there was a short term, she told him and she started the process for him. Great. Connor, you won't be able to do it. You're right. Yeah. Um, just uh, can you go over the needs of egress to the top floor of the addition again? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so two needs of egress. Is the front stairwell in, in the fire escape, the existing fire escape right here. So there won't be a fire escape on the top floor at all? Yeah, I don't think the building code is not going to allow this one. Um, you don't need it. The building's going to be fully sprinkled. I mean, I, I should have mentioned that, fully sprinkled. So you, 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 don't, you don't need a second means of egress for this fourth unit. Well, I'm not just doing the fourth floor, but I mean, if anything, it lines up with three snelling place, but you have your second means of egress here and the main stairwell. What was what when going over with the architect was to sit, well, first of all, the building is already fully sprinkled or it's sprinkled yeah. because when we were doing renovations, um, they when we were doing the renovations, we, the sprinkler system was already added to the building. 
uh, and the way that it's going to be done, the top floor unit being that it's part, still part of, being that it's two level units, based on the building code, they said as long as it egresses from the lower floor, that's fine, and with the balcony, this, this, the short patio outside, that was the other protection on that. Okay. So is there like a stair, would there be a staircase going, or like something like that connecting that? No, you're fine. Uh, well, on the outside. Is there just going to be no, a staircase? There's, there's no, there's no staircase connected. No, there's no staircase, no. So this is your second means of egress, which is currently there now. Yeah, but if someone's on the, the top room. If someone's in the top And they, they can't can get, if something's... If wide. anything, if they're up top here, yeah, and then the room. building's wrinkled, this will be in alignment with number three. So you can walk across number yeah. three. It's also right. gonna, it's actually probably both one, two, and three. Because that that hasn't changed. That six feet that you have for the patio is the three. The, the, the three will be right. So this will be on a ladder here. Okay. Because we actually did put it on to begin with, and we were told that we should just take it off. Who told you to do it? The architect. Uh, I mean, we had drawn it on there and the architect said that when speaking to people from the building department was told that you should just take it off. Can you Marie? Uh, it, it mentions a private roof, roof deck. Who was the private roof deck for? Unit yeah, number three. That would be for garage. Yeah, so unit mentioned. number three. It's an interior stairwell. Once you, once you enter unit three, the electric unit three here, well, this is not this unit. I'm sorry. Enter unit three. You go up to uh, private roof. Right, it's interior stairwell, so no one, there's no common stair to the roof. You're not going to be able to get there. So unit three is going to have the stairwell, that, and they're going to be able to go into to the roof deck to a private uh, interior stairwell to the private roof deck. That was like a private roof patio or Oh, yeah. Right, and then you're not going to be able to, I mean, this is attached, it's the lower level, that's the existing top floor, that's exclusive to Unit 3 as well. How many feet is that going to be? This here, it's about six feet there, and I'll get, and going across, the building is 17 feet going across, 17 and a half, that's probably about, you know, 10, 12 feet maybe, um, it's, this is three added because it's the same dimensions here. Right. So, so three has approximately 70 square feet of space, and, that, and that's what we went off. So, in terms of the architectural drawings, what I did is I I passed on three's architectural drawings for the one-story addition to our architect, and he drew them. The dimensions. Is there any abutters for notified? Absolutely. Anyone else on the council? Did you all the meeting? We had an abutters yeah, meeting. Maria was there. The, the Aquilino family was present. I believe you'll hear from um, the Aquilino family soon. And uh, we had, we're at the ZLC as well. Dan, if approved, when does construction start? When are you hoping it will be done? And then two to three years is when he would come we're, back? We're hoping, oh, he, he's planning on coming back in two to three years with his, with his wife and two kids. He wants to get to be educated here, not Singapore. Uh -huh. uh, because they're little kids. Um, and we figure that construction, realistically, realistically, probably about a year from now, we'd like, he would like it sooner than that, but with doing the construction drawings and design review and everything, we figure it'll probably take about a year, and we figure it'll probably be about a five-month construction. So he figures about a year and a half from now it should be complete. Is what he's hoping, and then about a year after that he's planning on moving back. And he would lease it in between that year. No, he's not going to. After he, after he, if he redoes his apartment the way he wants it, he's probably not going to lease it for that period of time. He's not going to want to destroy it. Does he own any other properties in Boston? Uh, he and I own uh, ten, uh, 1027 Tremont Street, right, uh, right by Northeastern, and we're actually going to be, it, it's right by Northeastern uh, University, and that is a rental building over there, and we're going to end up opening up a restaurant down there, which 
his wife is planning on part time managing. Any short term leases at 1027? No. 1027 Tremont Street is right behind the new construction of Northeastern dorms. Northeastern I mean, couple hundred dorm rooms, uh, eight, uh, 670. Yes, yeah, 670. So it's right behind there. It's restaurant space and residential. Uh, their, their dorms don't have any any restaurants at all, so we figured that we put the restaurants 18 feet from their dorms. Just out of curiosity, what town do you live in? I live in New York. Oh. And it also comes All right, and I know we have another butter, so I'll turn to you first. Hello, my name is Angelica Axelino. I'm here on behalf of my parents. I live in 3 North Bennett Court, but unfortunately it couldn't be with me for a uh, previously arranged travel. For us, the problem is simple. I'm the fourth generation to continuously live in my building. Um, unfortunately, the owner does not live in his building. He's not here, so any of the effects he's not privy to, any of the problems that we've had have been happening. Um, just in terms of Airbnb and short-term rental, there have been multiple times we've double doors in our house, and there have been multiple times that, and I'm not saying that it's just room number two, but let's say in the area in general, um, multiple times that our door will be knocked on, or somebody will try to get into our door at night once it happened at three in the morning. So obviously, if you get worried, you go downstairs. Um, to the best of our knowledge, the recent place I know your diagram um, is shown to have a roof deck. However, that's also a third generation building that we've known the owners for years. To the best of our knowledge, it did get approved, but they have no plans to do the cost and just change of mind and construction to move forward with that. Um, also, three more Bennett, uh, sorry, three strong places isn't as much of a concern because it doesn't abut our building. Um, in this case, having a roof deck, then we will be the lowest building and it will sort of put us into a valley. So then it takes away more of our ventilation. We have two skylights on our um, roof. So if you have a roof deck, obviously with lights on, it's already happened in the past where people who live on the top floor, it's the summer, you go up onto the roof. Obviously that's our middle of our living room, so if there's lights on, people look directly into you. Um, it's just privacy, airspace, snowfall, to people who really aren't going to be affected by this at all. And I'm just not sure if anybody, um, I think everybody already got the letter that my dad prepared. Um, if if no. it's the one you sent me, I, I then, circulated it. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I know there's a meeting as well. Okay. So the, Where the, are you? Can I get a copy of this? Right here. Okay. I, right here. That's one. Okay. So this is proposed two and proposed three. And that's four. Maybe that's Hall Street. So is there going to be windows on that there's side? There's no windows. You can't put windows there because we're up, we're up on the property line. So there won't be right. any windows. My understanding, and I, I know you can correct me, but I know there's a skylight here, right? And, and maybe down here, right? And we, we're, we're set back from nine feet. So and then we have our head house. Um, <coughs> so hopefully there is no privacy issue. But like I said, I can't guarantee. I, I understand the concerns. Where they, if they were at three, were they able to see each of your? So, if, no. um, so three, I mean, three is here. I mean, at, currently, all the roofs are the same height. So one could be on, and then four, so one could be on four and walk all the way across and, and vice versa. So Sorry, five. I meant two. So, yeah, so right now, we're equal height is, is one. And so is three. Okay. The, all the gray, the thick gray line yeah. is the property existing. Those are, that's right. the two is the proposed and then three is right. the proposed. So our architect put this together to show an idea of what it, what it could look like or what it should look like. Okay. And then the other concern you said is like Airbnb and things like that. Or yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we share that concern. Yeah. Yeah, so. um, Obviously, experience all of us there, so we know yeah. we know what it's like. Also, to hear. Uh, Rolling suitcases in the middle of the night. That's a dead giveaway. Yep. Um, <laughs> most right. times. Barack <laughs> uh, is willing to put something to state to put something in writing that he will not Airbnb the place. He's already kicked out the tenants who 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 rented from him and tried it. Yeah, and if he's not living there anyway, anyway he, can't do, he right. won't be able to yeah. do it yeah. anyway. Right. But then he the current on in However, if he does move, right. that would be yeah. welcome. For yeah, sure. I, I think if yeah. he does move in there, <coughs> right. Since it, you know, 
I would imagine if he went there, he probably wouldn't want Airbnb anyway next door. So it's but it doesn't. Right. It's neither here nor there. As long as there's no other uh, butters or anybody else. All right, then uh, let's vote on this and uh, we'll tally them. President, members of the board, thank you for having me. Thank you.